With the launch of the RTX 3090 Ti and VDS new 450 Watt Monster GPU, we have reached the end of what Ampere can deliver in terms of raw performance. Nvidia went all out with the RTX 3000 series. We have never seen that many different SKUs in the high end. It's actually crowded up there. 3080 10GB and 3080 12GB, 3080 Ti, 3090 and now the 3090 Ti. The question is, how long will the 3090 Ti keep its top spot? How long before Ada Lovelace takes over? It could be closer than we think and the 3090 Ti might be a test run for what's to come, both in terms of raw power and the required cooling solutions. In this video, I will take a look at what we know so far about Nvidia's upcoming GPUs and how the RTX 4000 series might be more similar to Ampere than you thought. Over the past year, rumors regarding Nvidia's next-gen Ada Lovelace GPUs have showed a steady increase in the protected power consumption. At first we had rumors about 400 watts, then 400 to 500 watts, and now the rumors are pointing to a 600 watts or even more power consumption. So far the highest TDP cards Nvidia did offer were the 3080 Ti and the 3090, both with an official TDP of 350 watts. But the 3090 Ti just bumped that up to a whopping 450 watts. And as first tests show, it can draw even more than that. Suddenly a Radeon 6900 XT or a RTX 3080 look like power efficient GPUs. And not only does the 3090 Ti draw a lot more power, it's also not very efficient. The extra 100 watt more than a default 3090 for example don't result in a lot of extra performance. A few days ago, German YouTube channel Igor's Lab made a video in which he leaked the upcoming RTX 4080 and RTX 4090 PCB. I have the German video and the English article from him linked down in the description below. Go check it out. Leaks from Igor's lab concerning new Nvidia GPUs and especially their PCB and power design have already had a really good track record in the past. Igor was the first to leak the RTX 3080 and 3090's memory design and showed how Nvidia had to move the memory chips much closer to the GPU die in order to get the fast GDDR6 memory working. Igor has great connections to Chinese PCB manufacturers and his infos are very likely correct. He got photos of the reference PCB but chose to transform them into a drawing as to not endanger his source. Again check out his video or English article for more information. The PCB leaks show two very interesting things about Lovelace. First of all the VRM setup is massive. We are talking about 24 phases, definitely built to handle a power draw in the ballpark of 600 watts. And second the whole memory and GPU die layout are very similar to the 3090 Ti. According to Igor, GA102 Ampere and AD102 Lovelace are supposed to be pin compatible. So our first look at the PCB basically confirms the rumor regarding the increased power consumption. The 3090Ti with its compatible builds allows the OEM companies to start working on their next-gen RTX 4000 cooling solutions and basically test them out with their 3090Ti cards. You could say the 3090Ti is some of a pipe cleaner for Ada Lovelake based GPUs. But aside from confirming how power hungry the next gen cards will most likely be, the PCB leak also confirms something else. The memory setup. It's the same layout as with GA102 with up to 12 solder points for GDDR6X memory. This means we can expect the same 384-bit memory interface as with the high-end Ampere cards. But even if Ada Lovelace will use higher clocked GDDR6X, the memory bandwidth won't be able to increase in the same way as we expect the raw computing power to increase. How is Nvidia going to feed a RTX 3090 for example with bandwidth if they aren't switching to a wider memory interface or much faster memory? The answer is pretty simple, by taking a page out of AMD's playbook. Yes, I am talking Infinity Cache or rather something similar. With RDNA 2, AMD introduced a large top level cache as a buffer for the memory system. With up to 128 MB at 2 TB per second of bandwidth, this rather small cache compared to the gigabytes of video memory allows AMD to use a small 256 bit memory interface with efficient GDDR6 memory and still provide enough bandwidth for the GPUs. According to previous leaks, AD102 will have a whopping 96 MB of L2 cache, which would be a way to decrease the GPU's dependency on hard memory bandwidth. And while 96 megabytes are less than what AMD built into RDNA 2 and a lot less than what's rumored for RDNA 3, you have to consider that Nvidia is in a completely different position. 
RDNA 3 is supposed to retain the same 256-bit interface as RDNA 2, while the RTX 4090 will have a 50% wider 384-bit interface with faster GDDR6X memory. In addition, Nvidia is increasing their L2 cache, which has a much higher bandwidth than AMD's Infinity cache, which acts more like a large L3 cache, so to speak. Nvidia's approach could offer more than 7 terabytes per second of bandwidth, compared to AMD's Infinity cache with about 2 terabytes per second. This setup should allow Nvidia to power a 4090 without increasing the memory interface. And if we take a look at the rumored SM count increase, it becomes clear that Lovelace is a brute force approach by Nvidia. A massive chip with probably high clock speeds. That's the reason for the very high power draw. Nvidia had to work around using an even larger memory interface, as it would have increased the power draw even more. It's more efficient to spend some extra die space on more cache than to implement a 512-bit interface or use even higher clock memory. Some people expected a similar increase in L2 cache size with Nvidia's HPC-focused Hopper GPUs. But when Nvidia introduced their H100 chips last week, the L2 cache increase over A100 was very minimal. And it does make sense, Nvidia is creating a different architecture for their HPC and gaming-focused GPUs. Hopper is using HBM3 memory with a bandwidth of over 3 terabytes per second. No need for a huge L2 cache to relieve the memory system. Something that might does have a chance to translate from Hopper to Lovelace is the process node Nvidia is using. So far, rumors are predicting Nvidia will be using TSMC's N5P process for the RTX 4000 series, same as AMD's RDNA 3. But with Hopper, Nvidia made a jump to the 4N process. Yes, that's not a typo, although it's most likely based on TSMC's N4 process. The N behind the 4 is supposed to show the optimization for Nvidia. I don't think it means Lovelace will definitely use this new 4N process, but it might be a possibility. So, what do we know about Nvidia's upcoming Ada Lovelace chips? Well, quite a bit and not that much at the same time. Lovelace is very likely to have very high TDP cards, especially in the high-end area. I think it's almost certain that a 4090 will use upwards of 450 watts, the new benchmark just set by the 3090Ti. Nvidia's AIBs are currently using the 3090Ti designs to test run their air cooling solutions for high TDP cards, and it seems to be an issue. Of course, you can cool it with a large enough heavy air cooling solution, but at some point, it's not going to be quiet anymore, no matter what you try. It's also very likely that Lovelace will use a similar memory setup to Ampere with a 384-bit wide interface and GDDR6X, but make up for the need for more bandwidth by increasing the L2 cache size by quite a lot, almost like AMD's Infinity cache. And there's the chance that Nvidia will use TSMC's Nvidia optimized 4N process node, although N5P is still equally likely in my opinion. What we still don't know is how much of an architectural change Lovelace will be over Ampere. Nvidia could have changed quite a bit aside from the L2 cache increase, or it could be very similar to Ampere, just like a supercharged card. At the moment, I'm a bit concerned due to the rumored high GDP, because using brute force to get ahead was never really Nvidia's strong point. They always did best when they had the efficiency advantage. I don't want another Fermi. I'm sure we will get more and more leaks the closer we get to the third quarter. That's when Lovelace is supposed to launch. It will be interesting to see how much of the current rumors and my own analysis turn out to be true in the end. But it looks like a lot will carry over from Ampere. I would like to know your opinion on the current RTX 4000 Lovelace rumors. Do you expect the high TDP claims to be true? And would a 600 watt GPU be something you might buy? Or is it a lot of question for you? Leave a comment down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, and see you in the next video.